Reference geometries are points, lines, and planes that will help us build more complex features that are not easily sketchable using the existing geometries. For example, the slanted planes in this geometry are not initially there, nor they are when building the first rectangular prism. However, since the location of the vertices are fully dimensioned, we can build reference geometries to create points, lines, and planes that will aid us building the features we want to create. So let's begin with a very general building plan for this part. It seems that we can begin with a rectangular prism, then somehow create two separate reference planes, the slanted planes, so that we can chop off those corners, and then create another set of reference slanted planes to cut those slanted circular holes. The first step we know how to do from our previous video, and make sure to watch that one first if you haven't already. We can sketch a rectangle on the top plane and extrude it up. To do this, we create a sketch, select the top plane, we'll use the rectangle option, instead of the lines we used to build the rectangle in the previous video, we select the origin as the rectangle's origin, so that the location is fully defined, and we use smart dimension to give it the 5 inches base and the 6 inches height. After making sure that our sketch is fully defined, which is making sure that every element is black, not blue, we exit the sketch and select Extruded Boss to give it a blind height of 2 inches. And let's give it a cast alloy steel material just for fun. Now for the first slanted plane, we see that the distances to its vertices are given. For example, if we look at the side view, we see a diagonal line. We can draw this line as a construction line, meaning a line that won't be part of the actual sketch if we were to use it for any feature. This construction line is called a center line under the lines drop down menu. We go to sketch, select the side plane, control 8 for the normal view, select the center line and draw a similar diagonal line, and by looking at the drawing, we see that the point on the left is 0 point inches from the top and the point on the top is 3 inches from the right. We can exit this sketch since it's fully defined. For the third point, we could draw another center line on the front or the top surface, but we don't really need two lines to define a plane. All we need is the remaining point. To do this, we can use the first reference geometry of the day. If we go to Features and click the drop-down menu of the Reference Geometry icon, we can select Point. We want this point on the intersection line between the front and the top surface of the prism. And we know that this point is located 4 inches away from the left. Notice that depending on where you click elements, in this case the line, SolidWorks will try to understand what you're trying to do. So for example here, if we click the line on the left, the input distance will be that from the left. Look at the pink purple point 4 inches away from the left. And if we click the line on the right, the input distance will be that from the right. This will be helpful later. Now with the line and a point, we can fully define a plane. So we can go to Reference Geometry once again and select a reference plane. At this point, SolidWorks will ask us for three references. And sure, we can select the three points, one, two, three, and we have the plane we need. Or we can select a point and a segment. Either works. We can do that by canceling this reference plane creating a new reference plane and selecting point 1 and the segment we created with the center line. We end up with the same reference plane and we can extend it as much as we want. Remember that it's still a plane, meaning it's infinite in both dimensions. Now that we have that plane, we can create a sketch of that triangle and use an extruded cut to get rid of that corner. We select Sketch, select the new plane, Plane 1, and make sure that you are in fact selecting Plane 1, not the extruded boss behind it, Press Ctrl-8 for that normal view, sketch the triangle with the lines option, exit sketch, and select extruded cut under features. If the direction of the cut is not what we want, we can click on the arrow that determines the direction of the cut, and we'll select through all here to cut all the way to the end of the geometry. This is important in case we want to change the dimensions of the prism later, and we still want the cut to get rid of the entire corner. Since we're not going to use this reference plane anymore, we can hide it by right-clicking on the plane and selecting the Hide option. We can do the same with reference point 1 and the origin. Now we can do the same for the second slanted plane. Let's just use three reference points in this case. The first point will be one inch from the top corner, as well as the second and third point. 
and make sure that when you click Reference Geometry, no other geometry or element is already selected. If for example point 3 was already selected, when I'm trying to create point 4, the second I go to Reference Geometry point, point 3 will already be selected, and we don't want that. We now create a reference plane using the three points we just created. With that plane selected, we select Sketch, Control 8 for the normal view if you need it, draw the triangle, exit Sketch, and create an extruded cut. And again, we check the direction is the correct one, and select Through All, and we hide the planes and points. With those out of the way, we can work on the angled holes. If we look at the first hole, we see that we have the information on the location of the center of the hole on the top surface. We know that from either looking at the isometric view or noticing that the location of the center line of the hole is not dashed and therefore is a visible feature from the top. So let's mark that point first. We create a sketch on the top surface, we use the point option, we place it anywhere and we use Smart Dimension to locate it at 1 inch from the corner. Now for the hole itself, we see that the angle it forms with the horizontal plane is 65 degrees. This means that a perpendicular plane to that hole, which is exactly what we want so that we can draw a circle and extrude a hole out of it, is angled at the complementary angle 90 minus 65 or 25 degrees. To do this, we will use a reference plane. We can choose the top plane as our first reference and notice that if we select our second reference by clicking on the edge of that plane, the first option will be perpendicular and therefore a vertical plane. We don't want that, but if we look at the options, there is one that allows us to set the angle made between the reference plane we're trying to create and the plane of reference that we chose, the horizontal one. And this we know to be 25 degrees. We click OK, we keep that plane selected to create a circle, we place the center of the circle on the point we know it's gonna pass through, use Smart Dimension to set the diameter to the 0.8 inches we know, and exit the sketch. With the sketch selected, we can now select Extruded Cut, and once again select Through All. And this is exactly what we wanted. The center of the circle on the top surface will pass through the point we drew, and the hole will be angled at 65 degrees. Now for the last hole, the only difference is that we have been given a center line that is at a distance 4 inches away from the edge on a slanted plane. This already suggests that we would probably want to have the reference plane first and on that plane locate our point for the center line of the hole. To do that, we create a reference plane, we select the top plane, the edge at the back, type the complementary angle of 30 degrees, and hit OK. The point, located on that new plane, and viewing it perpendicularly, is 3 inches away from the side, and 4 inches away from the top. We sketch a circle with that point as the center, of diameter 1 inch, and we use it to extrude a hole, through all. And done! We have exactly what we wanted for that hole. Let's hide that plane, look at the isometric view, and it looks good. We can change our display style to show us hidden lines visible, and we can look at the front view, look at the side view, and look at the top view, to make sure that our part is in fact correct. Of course, we can actually evaluate some of the dimensions, or even use the Create Drawings from this part option to be 100% sure that all of our dimensions are consistent. But we'll cover that in a later video. So make sure to check out the link to that video and the links to the other lectures of this course down in the description below. Thanks for watching.